Thank you, Jane. I'll start again. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the meeting of the Lives and Homes ONS Committee. Um, the meeting is being broadcast live via the Council's website. Um, we do have some apologies, some people we haven't heard from at all. We had expected uh, Councillor Kershaw to be uh, here as a member of the committee, but uh, we haven't heard from him. Um, and the one apology I have received for absence is from Councillor Sue Tucker, uh, and she is usually um, represented by Councillor Moore, but he isn't here either today. Um, and we do have an apology from uh, one of our directors, Paul Thompson, who has a, another meeting that clashes with this one. So, we move on to our agenda. Um, declarations of interest. Um, if any member has any items of interest on this agenda, um, if you could declare them now, or if it occurs to you during the debate, um, we can take them on board then. Uh, item two, public questions. We don't have any public questions from the members of, uh, the, the, of the public. So we then move on to item three, which is the minutes of our last meeting held on uh, 20th of July, 2022. A much better day weather-wise than it is today, very much, isn't it? So can we approve those, uh, agen those minutes? Thank you very much indeed. I should have um, I've been a little bit remiss there. Uh, I should have welcomed Councillor Tony Randerson uh, as the executive uh, member, um, who's two of the items in our agenda today do come under uh, Tony's portfolio, and also to welcome Councillor Alf Rab Abbott, who's going to speak about the Whitby Cemetery report. So, we conveniently move on now to the uh, to item four, which is the provision of cemeteries in Scarborough, Whitby, uh, and Filey. And we have Jonathan here to uh, represent uh, the uh, the officers and to put forward uh, his report. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes. So um, members will be aware that. Um, I last gave an update on future cemetery provision on this meeting on the 18th of May this year. And um, as part of that report, I provided feedback on the public consultation that we undertook um, towards the latter end of last year and the beginning of this year. So I reported on the feedback from um, stakeholders on the proposed sites for future cemetery developments. Um, <coughs> as part of that meeting, I, I did give an undertaking to uh, present the findings of that public consultation to members of Filey and Whitby Town Council. Um, this, as you'll see in my report, I, I did this um, on the 5th of July. Um, I attended Whitby Town Council with um, a representative of uh, CDS Group, who have been our consultants helping with this project so far. Um, and I also attended Filey Town Council on the 13th of July. Um, the results, the outcome of really those meetings is uh, um, not unexpected in that uh, Filey Town Council members were, were unanimous in their support of the proposed new um, site for the extension of the Lawn Cemetery uh, when, it, when the existing site reaches full capacity. Um, Whitby Town Council, the majority of members um, were, weren't in favour of the potential site that we, we uh, proposed, which were, members will uh, know is the um, um, area of green space sandwiched between Larpool Drive and Larpool Lane in Whitby. Um, and their concerns were mirrored, those concerns that were raised by uh, consultees, uh, such as 
the loss of the green uh, space, uh, issues over access and egress, safety of road and access and egress to the site, um, and also the um, public transport issue um, for, for that site. So, uh, and during that meeting, um, pretty well all the Whitby Town Council members, however, were in favour of um, cemetery developments uh, to the land adjacent or near to Whitby um, Golf Club. Um, now, I also, um, you know, members uh, from this report, we did carry out further survey work um, of both the Scarborough site and the Whitby site. And in terms of the Scarborough site, which is an extension to the existing Woodland Cemetery, um, uh, a proposal by our consultants was received by the Environment Agency and they were in principle happy with those proposals but it would, have, would obviously be subject to any future planning application. Uh, the Environment Agency would scrutinise any, any proposals closely. We also, uh, our consultants, ask um, the Environment Agency if they had any major concerns from their point of view in terms of developing a, a cemetery site at the Larpool Lane um, locality. And they didn't have any um, objections in principle, but again, any planning application that was submitted would, would be closely scrutinised by them. Um, we also carried out two further surveys of the Larpool Lane site in Whitby. One was a transportation assessment, um, because obviously we wanted to try and address concerns expressed over road safety and access issues of that site. The conclusions of that transportation assessment were that um, the Larpool Lane site was well positioned for development into a cemetery site, with a range of transport modes available to those attending the sites, including public transport, walking and cycling. The report did state that um, they acknowledged that there would be some highway improvements and mitigation measures that, as suggested by uh, North Yorkshire County Council's highway service, um, and provided that these um, requirements or mitigations during the planning process were taken on board and implemented, um, the position of this assessment report was that there was no reason why there should be any tra significant transport-related reasons for not developing that site for a cemetery. Um, the, we also had a ge what we call a geophysical survey of that site undertaken and the results of that survey were that there were no, archae no likely archaeological matters of interest that again may um, cause a showstopper if that site was taken forward for planning, a planning application process. And North Yorkshire County Council's heritage team were satisfied with the outcome of that survey. Um, so, in, in terms of um, the Larpool Lane sites, in, in terms of statutory consultees, there were no likely showstoppers if a, a future planning application was put forward for that site for cemetery use. However, it is acknowledged that um, you know members of Whitby Town Council aren't in uh, favour of that site. However, I, d I did say at that meeting, and I have said in this meeting in pre previous hearings, that if there are any of the sites that haven't already been explored and had to be dismissed, then I would be quite happy to look at those. However, there are no other sites that have been um, uh, put forward. So at the moment, that, that site at Larpool Lane is the only really option at the moment. Um, at the end of the, my reports, I do talk about local government reorganisation in North Yorkshire because this does affect this project. And as members will know, 
the new unitary authority will, will take place, will, will come into existence from the 1st of April next year. With this in mind, uh, any future uh, decisions on which sites to approve to take forward for planning permission for future developments in this borough will be deferred and, uh, and taken by the, the new unitary council. Um, now, I have raised this project. Um, this project has been discussed at all the relevant North Yorkshire County Council uh, colleagues and through the work streams of the local government reorganisation taking place in North Yorkshire. And I um, represent the council in the bereavement services and the regulatory services subgroups. So I have personally raised this issue and it has been escalated up to the financial services work stream as well, um, so that the new council are fully aware of this important project um, from vesting day onwards. Um, I do have some copies of um, a previous appendix of, um, from a previous report that came to this committee back in uh, the 22nd of September 21, relating to some of the sites that have been looked at in Whitby, and I'm quite happy to hand these around um, and go through those if, if um, members would like. That would be helpful. So I've got a... <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Mortimer. I have got some more copies if there are, if anyone would like a copy. Um, I think I think uh, the person at the back would like a copy. Um, sorry. So if, if I summarise uh, for members the um, the sites that have been looked at, so starting with the ones that are shown in the photographs. Now this this particular document was uh, included in the report for overview and scrutiny members on the 22nd of September 2021. So the first site is the land south of Whitby Abbey, which is located off Green Lane. Now this, de this site, obviously because of its closeness to the uh, Whitby Abbey, was a, a potential site for archaeological interest. And because of this, um, uh, the sur survey that we did at the time suggested that there would be uh, the costs, associated to costs of doing archaeological assessments and mitigation if this site was to be developed for cemetery use would be prohibitively expensive. So it was discounted. The second site that we, we looked at was land to the south of <coughs> California Road in Whitby. Now this was ruled out due to the steep topography and proximity to a watercourse. The third site was uh, Rohilla Close, um, which has been discounted because obviously it's a, it's a housing estate. Site four is the current Larpool Lane site. Uh, there is no capacity or scope for additional barriers once this uh, cemetery reaches full capacity in approximately four years' time. If you look over the page, Site 5 is fields beyond Estdale School. Uh, this comprises of playing fields which are used by the school and the other section um, is earmarked for housing development. Site 6 is land off um, uh, Stainacre Lane which is near Whitby Waste Treatment Works. Now this is privately owned and we've had very limited contact with the owners of this land but I, I can tell members of the limited contacts I've had with the, the company that own this parcel of land they, are, they wouldn't be very keen on developing, selling this land to the council for, house, for cemetery development. 
Site 6 is the, the site that I've mentioned, which currently is the favoured site for a future cemetery development, which, is, which occupies uh, an area of about 1.4 acres or 1.8 hectares. Um, I have also approached North Yorkshire County Council's Estates Department and asked them if they have any Whitby lands that may be suitable for, for cemetery development in Whitby and they have confirmed with me that they don't have any lands available. Obviously lands adjacent to the Whitby Golf Club has also been suggested by Whitby Town Council and by um, various members of this council as well. But again, that land has been earmarked for housing development and is not, it is not an option for cemetery development. I have also looked uh, informally at other lands near Captain Cook Crescent, which was um, suggested by two consultees. Again, this land is privately owned, I'm told, by our planners and is on the local plan for housing development. Um, I've even looked at lands to the rear of Sneaton, Sneaton Castle and St Hilda's Priory. But this land is obviously owned privately and the topography uh, issues uh, are a problem. It certainly wouldn't be suitable for a cemetery site um, because of the, the steep slopes of the, of the valleys and it runs to a, a water stream. So um, I hope that gives members a flavour of, we have tried to look at other options in Whitby, and I would again say that if there are any other sites that haven't yet been brought to my attention, I am willing to look at those um, and consider them as a potential site for cemetery use. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I've suddenly realised you've got fuels beyond Estelle School. Um, I'd have to declare an interest with that when I'm governor at Estelle School and Whitby. Uh, yeah, non pecuniary card. though, yes, isn't it? Non pecuniary, yeah. non anything. But I'd rather it was taken notice mm. of. Um, I, I've forgotten that that was part of it, so apologies. Yeah, that's fine, Jane. Thank you. Um, do we have any comments or any? Do we have any questions of Jonathan's report at this stage? Sam. Thank you, Chair. Really, just there's two figures mentioned in the report. We've actually spent 400,000 um, on this feasibility study. Um, and I wonder how we managed to spend 400,000 on it if it's all gone to consultants. And the other fact that uh, figure that you've got 3.12 million, is that based on buying some land in Whitby? Uh, because we do own most of the land in Scarborough and Filey. Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, in terms of the, your first question, the, the figure of £400,000 is the actual over total budget currently that the council have um, earmarked for this project. So we haven't spent £400,000. Uh, I want that to be made absolutely clear. Um, but we have carried out a varying degrees of s s uh, feasibility studies and surveys over the last five years. And the current um, amount that we spent is uh, £60,000 on the various feasibility studies, surveys, work that our consultants have, have had to carry out. So, yes, I want to make that clear. We haven't spent all that money. <laughs> it's only a, 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 a frat, you know, a, a portion of it. Um, the second question is that that figure of three, three million is the current um, total cost of delivering this project, which means all the planning costs and all the costs of developing landscaping three, those three sites for cemetery use. Now that takes on board current uh, inflation, uh, which is running very highly uh, due to the, the massive increase in labour costs and material costs. But it also um, takes into account uh, future predicted inflation rises 
uh, into the new financial year, so in 23-24. But clearly the, the... this project will be delivered over a, a course of three, four to six years. So we, we don't know exactly what the, the final total figure of delivering this project will be at, but that is the current figure based on current inflation and next year's inflation figures uh, from our consultants. And that covers all, the whole cost, that covers planning, uh, getting, a, getting a contractor to do all the developments of the new sites um, and any mitigation measures as well. Um, so this will be key in the new authority for this project to go forward is that we will need more funds, um, but that funding will have to be secured in the new unitary authority because we only have... 400,000 currently, which can be carried... Well, it's not 400,000, it's £340,000 to be carried forward into the new authority to help with deliver this project. Thank you. Johnson, the site number seven, uh, which would be, um, mentioned there of a sports field. How well used is that sports field today? My, my understanding is that it's used by local residents um, for walking um, and to walk their dogs on. Um, it's not used by any local teams for, for football or for any other organised sports. It's purely there as a green space for the local residents to walk on, either you know, you know, people to walk on or people to walk on with their dogs. You may get perhaps local children who might kick about, kick a ball about in there, but uh, there are no organised sports there, and that was reflected in the, <coughs> the council's playing pitch strategy, which full council approved last year, that stated that this land was surplus to any sort of sports requirements and could be dispensed with for other use. Thank you very much. Yes, Jane, and then... Thank you. Um, We have had this before, so coming through. Um, And I'm pleased to note that Scarborough and Filey are happy with the areas. I mean, it's extensions to what is already there. The only one is Whitby that isn't an extension to the present facility. We did put forward views expressed at the last meeting, which is mostly transport and accessibility to Larpole Lane because of walking and things like that. But on reading this and hearing that there are ways of mitigating those problems, i.e. another footpath going through, um, and things can be done under planning, so you can ensure that this is the proper entryway and exits, ensure everything is done properly with car parking as part of the planning process. Um, I think then that is something that needs welcoming on that side because there's only three years left. Planning will take about three years. And if we're not careful, Whitby will not have a cemetery that is viable at that time for at Mm. least a year, maybe more. So after that, where do people go? Is it Gisborough? Is it Middlesbrough? Or is it Scarborough for a year or so until it gets sorted out? And I, I wouldn't like that, and I wouldn't wish that on anybody in Whitby. So, Larpool, I've been past it. I know it. I knew the problems, uh, and I was part of that and voted for the other one to, to look into how transport could be arranged and how planning could work. So thank you for the report. Um, and it really is something that no, it needs to be passed on to the unitary authority now mm. uh, to get a handle to or handle on for the future of Whitby. Cemetery. Thank you. I believe you've had, you've had contact with some of the tra- public transport services as well, John. Yes, uh, through through Harry Bar- Barosh, um, my, one of my colleagues who works at the council. Um, there is a um, current um, consultation survey going out relating to public improving public transport, public transport access in Whitby. And I have mentioned to Harry that um, potentially there will be another 
cemetery that we will need in Whitby in the next four years. Um, and at the moment, I've provided the location of Larpool Lane. Um, and Harry is obviously working with local bus operators on, on a future public transport strategy for, for Whitby. So, so this has been raised with, with Harry. I think it's just so important that people it is so important that people are able to get access to the to the to the cemetery at all at, at all times um, and in all and in all weathers. Um, Councillor Casey, John, you what did you come in? Uh, yes, I was going to say exactly the same as Councillor Mortimer, but you got to her before you got to me, so I've got therefore nothing further to say. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Councillor Abbott, welcome to the meeting. Um, I know you have views, views on this one, so... Thank you for letting me pass wind, Mr Chairman. I shall come out with my speech, my sermon, that Jonathan's heard many times before. I'd like to talk to you about Larpool Lane first. Larpool Lane was an, off, an offshoot of Everdale playing fields that uh, were developed some years back and it turned out to be a, a public inquiry on that, uh, that field simply because it was uh, a football pitch and I believe that a colleague of mine around the back here said that uh, he used to referee on that field and it done him a lot of good. It was the slopes on it. And the thing about Everdale uh, is when they did the public inquiry, which took a long time, it took years to do this, and uh, Mrs Vivian Wright and Councillor Sandra Turner, they, they were the big fighters for this to stay as a recreation field for the residents, because there isn't much more up there. The field, when it, when it came to the inquiry, because of Larpool Lane, the inquiry said that there is another field which is only a stone throw away. So therefore, this, this Everdale playing field can be sacrificed as a recreation field because there is one nearby. And that's how it proceeded on to what it is now. There's buildings all over Everdale playing field. And Larpool Lane is, as we've searched it out, are on the deeds of Larpool Hall. And they were put on the deeds in 1948. And they were put on the deeds by Whitby Urban District Council as a recreation field. And it has two uh, deeds, deed or poles or whatever you might want to call them, that it is a recreation field, one given in 48 and the other one given with the public inquiry. So that is two as a recreation field. Jonathan says that there is no sports played on there now. There is no sports. He is right, simply because it's been neglected. Neglected by Scarborough Council or whoever it might be. I played rugby on there a lot of years ago. There's no change in facilities, nothing. If there's any damage on it, it never got repaired. It very rarely gets cut. And it's just left the wreck and ruin. So it, it, isn't, it isn't going to be classed as a playing field, as such, or a sports field, because of that. And you must remember that we have Barrett's estate next to that. Barrett's is a massive building estate. And there's been... David Wilson houses have been put into it as well. So Barrett's and David Wilson's now... Uh, I would say well over a thousand houses there. And all those, those houses have a lot of kids and there's nowhere else for them to play apart from Lapo Lane. And we are short on green space on, on the east side of Whitby. And that, that's, that's one of the points that we're failing, to, we're failing to notice where the kids are going to play. That's the thing. We, you know, we've got... We've got I know we have beaches and stuff like that, but it, that's not the issue. It's, it's the playing fields. The access to Larpool Lane, as uh, 
Councillor Mortimer says, is, is not, it's not good because you have to go up a uh, steep hill. The set, I would say it would be the second highest mountain in Whitby that you have to go up to get to the Everdale Plainfield. The first one being Green Lane, that's, that's the, the steepest one that we have. And the, the roads narrowing, then we come to the bottom of the existing cemetery and the narrowing further before you get to the actual field. And as, as you get to the actual field, it now is right in so that it's capable of one and a half cars to roll down it. A lorry coming up from Luzerp wouldn't be able to manoeuvre past any car. They'd have to pull into some sort of a lay-by. The next, next one that uh, was talked about was that uh, Jonathan mentioned fields, uh, sites, uh, for just on the outskirts of Whitby, which are now being built on, opposite Sainsbury's that are now being built on. And the other one, the top of Green Lane that was mentioned, that's now being built on. So we've two sites now that is, is on progress of houses going on them. We, we, we the residents of Love Lane, talked about the uh, golf club some years ago and it was suggested by the residents on there that uh, a, suitable, a suitable house, house, house on there would be astronomical in prices. And that wasn't what we were looking for. We were short of parking and we were short of cemeteries. And that's what we were looking for. And it was suggested by one of the residents that they wouldn't mind a cemetery being built at the back of them. And so it escalated from there. The golf club site, like most sites in Whitby, has all got covenants on them. They've all got Acts of Parliament on them. The golf club site was another lump of land given by Whitby Urban District Council for recreation land. And it comes under the 1938 Act, and it's a Public Health Act of 1938. It was then, I, would, I, I wasn't around then, but it was said that uh, it, a lot of land belonged to the nuns from St. Castle up that area. But the golf club site was, was allocated under the Public Health Act in 1938. A strip of land that was taken off the golf club to pay debts, that's what it was paid, that was taken off. The golf club was behind on there council tax or whatever it might be and the, they offered this strip of land as part of the debt payment. And what, what, what was said about the, uh, the strip of land on the golf club was it, it's everything's there, the roads, the easy access, the bus stops, pedestrianise it, everything was there for easy, easy access. In other words, no expense spared because it was already there. And what, what the residents are saying, are still saying this now, we haven't got a lot of time, a lot of time to look at this because Everdale Road there, Everdale Road and Lapo Lane, they, they are, I would say they're, they're out of the equation. This, this land is still there. It's still got access to it on the, onto the RAF estate where there's a, an open access there the residents on that uh, strip of road there, uh, two retired police officers, they own the, the clearing land onto the site of the golf club and they've offered to, to give the, the site an entrance because they own that site and they've, they've offered to give them a site. And that's access from Love Lane and onto the RAF estate. The RAF estate, was put there uh, the after, just after when Filing Dales was being built for uh, accommodation for the RAF themselves. And then it, it escalated towards Sneaton Castle because they owned all that <coughs> at that time. They owned all that land and, and that's how that got there. Uh, it was, was said 
by Jonathan again. The local plan. We're on the local plan. It, it says it's earmarked for building. We, we, the council, own the land. And I was told by chief planning officers that anything on the local plan, it, it's, it's put there as a, a vision for the future. If the owners don't want to sell it, then they don't sell it. It's not compulsory purchase. It's, it's, is that right then, Carol? Yeah. Yeah. It's put there for a the purpose. So therefore, what I'm saying to you, Chairman, it's not compulsory that the golf club doesn't get, the golf club goes for building. It's not compulsory. We can have it as a cemetery. We can have it as recreation. We can have it as, as what we're short of, the town's short of. So this threats of local plans that we're getting all the time now is it's on local plan. You can't, you can't have it. And this, that and the other. It's, it's not true. It's false. It's, it's, it's like what Donald Trump says. It's false information. And we need to be clear on this. And I, what I'm putting to you is that the golf club is a suitable site, more so than any other site that we've got. And I've looked around everywhere and spoke to farmers, whatever have you, and there is no land. It's all built on. And, and we'd, we've got to protect what we've got, recreational land, and obviously a cemetery is what we want. Mm. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Alf. Johnson, any comments on what Alf has said? Uh, I mean, some of, the, some of the comments that Councillor Abbott has mentioned about um, things that happened in terms of covenants and back in 1940s, I, I, I don't want to make comments on because I, 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 can't, I can't comment on what he said, but I have done a, a legal search. Um, our, I did ask our legal services <laughs> to look at the Larpool Lane site to see if there were any covenants or restrictions of that land that might make it a problem for it to be developed into a cemetery use. And um, I was advised there weren't any covenants, there weren't any legal restrictions. The land is owned by the council, so it, it's, it's the council's prerogative to decide what, what to do with it, what to do with that land. Um, and obviously that will roll over into North Yorkshire Council. It will become North Yorkshire Council land from the 1st of April. Um, so, so my understanding is that, you know, if the council make a decision that that parcel of the land is to be developed for cemetery use, then, then there's nothing to stop that going ahead. Obviously, there's got to be due process that has to be go through planning, and obviously we have a, important stakeholders that have to give comments like the Environment Agency and Sport England, um, and North Yorkshire County Council and a few others. So, so that's all subject to, to close scrutiny from those organisations. Um, in terms of the green space, um, I mean, it's, own, it's used, as I say, I, I don't live there. I, it's only when I've been up there to have a look at the lands. I have seen people walk on the lands, so, um, you know, with their dogs or... And I would imagine there will be kids that will kick a ball around there as well. Um, but, you know, we do have other facilities that um, are available up in Whitby. Um, there's the, uh, the new sports multi-purpose uh, ground at Estale School that has floodlights, which was open last year. So there are plenty of sort of facilities for for children and, and for local sports teams to use, uh, which was sort of, um, you know, determined by the, the playing pitch strategy of the council. In terms of the, <coughs> the, the golf club sites, um, all I can say is that, um, you know, the, the, the council are, are um, you know, via mark that lands, all of that lands that, that Councillor Abbott has has mentioned for housing development and uh, it, it's part, there are advanced negotiations around uh, <coughs> a, a, a venture, a joint venture 
uh, projects there. Um, but again, I don't know enough about those that project uh, to comment any further. But I've just been advised that that land is is earmarked for some other use other than for cemetery, uh, and it's not available. <coughs> Any part of that land is available for cemetery use. Um, that's all I can say. I need Thank you. a comment to make. Um, Councillor Abbott did refer to land, I think he said, it was off Love Lane, um, part of the former RAF, RAF estate. Uh, is, was, was that a, a serious contender, do you think? Oh. It, it's the only content <coughs> we have. We, we, when Councillor Chas was the portfolio holder, and he came with Jonathan all, all those years <laughs> back, and he spoke, he spoke uh, in, in depth on Whitby Town Council, and Councillor Chas suggested that Whitby, the residents of Whitby, take the, grasp, take the cemetery grasp in their hands and decided where they want the cemetery. Not where Scarborough Borough Council wanted it, where they wanted the cemetery. And then, obviously, there would, there would have been pockets of, of land available then, but since then, we haven't. It's gone. We've missed the boat. We're, we're down to, now, we're just down to the golf club. They, if it's still playing around with uh, Lapo Lane, I, I, I wouldn't... Uh, Personally, I, I, I would be on the picket line objecting to it because it's not, uh, it's not what we want. Mm. Sorry, did you, did you go in? Yeah, it's just to add further to um, Jonathan Bramley's comments. So currently that golf club site is included within the, the housing joint venture, the Better Homes project <laughs> that the council is progressing. Now, I understand that is going to North Yorkshire county council for approval so currently that that site has been whilst um your your comments are absolutely correct in terms of when it's on the the local plan that doesn't guarantee its development however currently it's within that better homes project that site and so um but obviously uh, as jonathan has indicated in his report i think all of these decisions are now with the the new unitary mm. authority but I think Councillor Abbott is to be praised for the research that he has done. I know he took me around uh, in, his, in his car to see a number of sites some time ago. Um, it's unfortunate that we haven't had any other um, suggestions of, 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 of potential sites coming from Whitby people themselves um, that, could be, that could be used. Um, I must admit, I am... Um, Concerned. I hear what Jonathan says about the, the sports field, um, but um, we hear that it's uh, likely to be used in the future by, uh, or it could be used in the future by uh, families uh, in, from the, the, the two big estates, something like a thousand homes. That does give me cause for concern. Um, and I'll say that as a, uh, as a trustee of the National Playing Fields Association, um, I, we have lost a lot of, of playing fields uh, over the uh, over recent years, um, and that does give me cause for concern. But we're in a situation where we haven't got any 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 other al good alternative. Oh, didn't you to come back, please, sir. John Jonathan and, and uh, Carol both mentioned that uh, we are, we we haven't. We haven't got an alternative. Uh, Jonathan talked about uh, Estelle School, that there's a, a 3G pitch or whatever it's called. That's, that's, not, that's not for the general public. That's the school field. And, uh, uh, no, uh, if, if you hang on, it's a school field. And with the school field, the public, it's not a free access to the from, for the public to go on when they want to go on. You have to pay. It has to be paid for. And that's not, that's not what it's about. Public, public access means it's free. You can go and put your tent there, you can go and lay on a blanket, you can have your picnic and that. That is not uh, a, a public access. It's a school field. And it's, you have to pay for it. You have to pay, I think... 
I don't know whether it's eight pounds or whatever, whatever it is. It's some you have to pay for it. Mm. Jane, can I have some water? You have to come in. Yes, it is. It's been built. It's a, a mugger, if I can put it that way. Uh, with it's just been built, but the local football team play there as well, um, if, up at the school, and have done for years. Um, but the the, the the other one is the, as you say, it's for the school, but it's open to the public to hire because you have to pay for upkeep and things like that. It isn't free, as you say, and open and done, but. Uh, it is accessible for use mm. of the public. I, I accept that, yeah. but at the end of the day, we're talking about recreation here for the, for the general public. You, you can't take your own dogs for a walk on that, you see other school fields. And, and there's a big issue at the moment throughout this country of, with, I'm going to say, the tree department, and people are getting around just watching the kids and whatever have you. And we don't want it. We should. Mm. Yeah. We do seem at this moment in time that we're in a situation where we have to uh, look seriously at the Lapo Lane, Lapo Lane site, whatever may happen with the new authority uh, uh, in the future. Perhaps, I may be a little bit naive on this, but uh, once this uh, hits the, the media in, in, in Whitby, it may be that somebody else may come forward with um, an, alternative, an alternative site, an alternative site that, we could, that we could consider. Um, I say, I know you've done a great deal of work, uh, Alf, in exploring uh, other, other, other sites, but um, I don't think we have a great deal of option at the, at the present time. Yes, Sam, Sam Councillor Cross. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, we've, we've sat on this meeting before and we've, you know, talked about sites and where people would like to be. And it's where people would like to walk the dogs, where people would like to walk football, play football. <coughs> and it's also where people would like to be buried when they die. And, you know what I mean, personally, you know what I mean, my ashes are going to go off probably in the lifeboat and get thrown at sea off Filey uh, Bay. And I'll be quite happy there because it won't really matter to me. But some people, it matters to. And we'd be residents and we'd be people that are born and bred that want to be buried in the Whitby area should have their choice where they wish to be buried. And I think out of, when I look at these sites, I think the best site, and I were up at the Whitby Golf Club a couple of weeks ago, and I think it would be a brilliant site to have a cemetery. You know what I mean? So I don't like the idea of La Pool, uh, but I think, as Councillor Abbott says, it would be the correct site for the residents of Whitby to have a cemetery. Thank you, Chair. Good. Um, well, now, we've had a good debate on this. Um, very good presentation from Jonathan, from, from Alf as well. Um, can we uh, seek any any motion from members of the committee? I just want to move this on because under planning, the um, matter of playing fields will be taken into account. It will have to go through a whole lot of statutory organisations. The one that you're trustee of will have to be taken into account and things like that. So uh, if it doesn't pass that, then it's not going to happen anyway, which is what Alf was saying. But in the meantime, can I say, just put forward a recommendation that certainly Scarborough, Filey and Whitby at Larpool Lane go ahead. Can because the planning will sort that one out uh, mm. with um, the Playing Fields Association during the planning process. Do I have a seconder? I'd like to second that. Right. Well, I have a proposal and seconder that we agree to the sites put forward for, for uh, Scarborough, Woodlands, and uh, for Filey, uh, and uh, the uh, Lapo Lane site at, at, at Whitby. Can we agree? Can we have a vote? Uh, 
That's three in favour and one against. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's um, not been an easy one. Um, it would be nice to think that some alternative site did come forward that would be suitable uh, for, for Whitby. But I think at this moment in time, we don't have a great deal of, uh, of option. I know Jonathan and um, Paul, Paul Thompson have done a great deal of work in resourcing um, and examining the various sites that have, that have come forward for Whitby. Um, and um, who knows, between now and the, the new authority coming into being, there may be some alternative uh, come forward. It'd be good to think so. But can I thank you for your report, Jonathan, and you, Alf, for coming along and giving such a, a detailed and um, very thought-provoking presentation this afternoon. So, um, we now move on then to the item five, which is the uh, allotments, and we have Councillor Randerson here as the cabinet member, and um, Councillor Smith, I think it's your ward, isn't it, Guy? So, welcome to you, welcome to you both, and to uh, Matthew as well. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Tony. Matthew, would like to uh, present your report? Right. Thank you, Chair. Um, following the recommendation of this committee to Cabinet in February this year, uh, it was resolved that we would re-establish the previous allotment site at Prospect Mount uh, to increase the supply of allotment plots in Scarborough. <coughs> And since then, we've received planning permission for, uh, to, for the change of use, and uh, we've started work on site. So I'm just here, really, just to update you on where we've got to. Um, so we've got some uh, photographs to, to show you, uh, to illustrate where we are. Um, I just wonder if you could open up the first one for me. That'd be, that'd be brilliant. OK. So this is the perimeter fencing that you can see there, which we've had installed. Uh, it's two metres high palisade fencing, and uh, that's the view of the vehicular access gate. Um, sorry. Sorry, can you... OK, sorry, can you, hear me? can you hear me better now? Yeah, you're looking at the perimeter fencing there and the vehicular access gates. Um, on the south side of the south boundary of the site. Um, can we have the next photo, please? Uh, on the other side of the site, on the north side, we've got a pedestrian access gate for the benefit of residents on, on that side of the, of the site. Um, there's 245 linear metres of, uh, of fencing to secure the site. Um, and at the request of Barrowcliff Residents Association, we maintained access through the site from one side to the other, uh, down one side. So that did actually <coughs> require additional fencing, um, but we've been able to achieve that. Um, could we have a look at the third photo, please? Um, that's a view across the site, looking from just inside the small pedestrian gate that uh, was on the previous slide. Um, so the site's been cleared. Um, it was very high with brash and brambles. There were various trees on there which uh, we've removed. We've kept one tree and the uh, bit of hedgerow at the request of the ecology officer. So uh, that's why there's a tree in there um, and some hedgerow. Um, the uh, access tracks have been uh, reused. You can see we're looking down, view down the main access track there, which is still stoned up and sound from when the site was used as allotments previously. And we've added some additional um, legs to that to, um, uh, to give access to, uh, to plots. So that's work that's been done so far. Um, 
the next stage is to install a water supply, um, which is hopefully going to happen this week. Uh, we've got consent from Yorkshire Water to tap into the water meter that was there when the uh, site was used as allotment previously, after quite a long delay, but uh, we've got there uh, with that. And we'll put a standpipe in the middle of the site, um, which should be accessible to, to all of the plots. So, can we have a look at the next, next one, please? This is, uh, you probably can't see that very well, but that is a, a plan of the, of the site. Uh, the, the dark line, oh, that's great. The dark lines around the perimeter is the, the line of the perimeter fencing. Um, and we've marked on the, uh, the water supply pipe and the access routes. And there's an initial sort of division of plots on there as well, which show the site being divided into between 25 and 30 plots. Um, it depends a little bit on what people actually want in terms of how much space they want as to how we end up dividing it. But uh, I would say we'd, we'd get nearly 30 plots on the, on the site, which is a little bit less than we had originally planned because we've had to reserve the access for local residents. I think that is probably about it, really, as to where we are now with, with this. So if anybody's got any, any questions or comments. June. Thank you. Just a comment. It's nice to see where the houses were. As you look at it, if you turn it round on the left-hand side, you've still got the hedgerow there that um, provides that buffer between the houses and the allotments. Yes. You can't really see it on that picture. No. But it's on the plan, you can. Yeah. Yes, it's good bird nesting. Um, yes, it is. It's, it's a lovely <coughs> tree hedge area that would yeah. be a shame to take down. Yes. Um, there's one thing, you've got a lot of full allotments there. Yes. And I, I'm just wondering, my daughter had an allotment at one time with holders, and she was only allowed to start with to have a half allotment to make sure that they can cope with it. An allotment is a large place to really get your hands on and change it from you know, <coughs> an absolute barren landscape to something mm. that's worth it. It might pay to have a few more. We can, yes, we can divide them up and make smaller plots if mm. that's what people would like. Yeah. Because yeah. they do have a, a waiting list for the new ones, as I said. But yes. I'm delighted to see it's coming forward. And once the water's there, come springtime, everybody can probably go in, get them sorted out, and then start growing and moving it forward. Yes. And that would be brilliant. Thank you. I, I know you're not on the committee, Al, but go on. No, I'm just going to... I'm intrigued with the... Uh, sorry. I'm intrigued with the, uh, the water supply that uh, they offer. Is this, is this being paid for by the residents, or the, the allotment holders? Are they paying for the water? No, well, the, are the, we subsidising? We're paying for water, <laughs> but the allotment holders will pay a rent for their plots, so that will include the use of the water. Mm. What's so, the soil like up there, Matthew? Uh, well, it's been allotments previously. Um, sorry, yes, it has been allotments previously, so it's previously been cultivated as such, but. There, are, there is a lot of hardcore and there's been a lot of fly tipping there over the years. We've oh, removed right. as much as we can of it. Um, so it's going to be quite a challenging site for people to start working on. So uh, um, that's another argument perhaps for dividing the plots up mm. into slightly smaller. Yes. How's the case, John? Uh, do we know what the size of the individual plots will be? Um, <coughs> a full-size allotment site is about 250 square metres. Um, so, but you, you can you, you can actually divide them up into any yeah, size yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can divide them into half or quarter plots. I think yeah. it's yeah. Easy access is and a good on idea. The ability of the allotment yeah. holder, of course. Yeah. Thank you. I'm aware that, that Councillor Anderson does have to go to a meeting at quarter past three. Uh, Tony, did you want to come in? <coughs> yeah, just very briefly, Chair. Um, I just want to commend this report uh, to the members' scrutiny board. 
Uh, it's an excellent report. Grateful thanks to the officers and indeed to the working party, you know, uh, I think chaired by uh, Rich Moore in bringing this report together. It's something that's been long overdue, in my humble opinion, uh, getting back on board with uh, the, uh, the need for, uh, to cater for those that like to do their own bit of gardening, keep the veg, etc. I know when I was growing up as a young lad out in Unmanby, every council house had a big garden at the back, and they grew their own vegetables, and they enjoyed doing it. They, was, they needed to do it, by the way. I think we're coming the full circle here. Mm. We mm. need to get back to that with these austerity measures that's been put in place. You know, people are feeling the pinch, yeah. and it's long overdue. And especially, I want to you know, briefly talk about my own patch, and that's uh, Dung Grove. Yes. And I understand there's legal work underway at the moment, and hopefully in a not-so-distant future, we'll get some... Uh, 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 word on that from our legal team. Uh, I'm a total optimist. I think that, that particular patch, even if we weren't putting an allotment on there, there's a legal necessity to get it opened up because it's going to become like a jungle before long because mm. vehicle, you know, our maintenance equipment can't get in because it's being blocked off. But with those few words, I'd really like to comment on the report, and I think, you know, all power to your elbows, to members around here, and I hope you can give it fully, you, you fully support. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. I think in the present climate as well, that the coming out of the pandemic and people, in many cases, who are suffering from mental health, I think they can find uh, a lot of um, benefit in, in taking up gardening. Um, it's uh, good for the health and well-being, physically and, and mentally. And um, I'm sure it's, uh, judging by what M Matthew has told us, um, there's going to be a demand there. And uh, obviously, if there's more demand, then we'll need to look for, for more sites. Jane. Thank you. Uh, following on from what Councillor Randa doesn't said, I think it's essential if we can get that legality sorted out and then you can get the garden at the back, which is for all the reasons so, so they have it might be better as a community garden rather than allotments i don't know but i do like the fact that in here we've asked planners to look for um, accessibility of community gardens rather than just plain grass because for the mental health side of things having a day in the garden can be annoying if you get too many weeds but it can be therapeutic as well yeah. um, but the impact of having a community garden uh, and making sure that that's on the planning policy somewhere, I think it would be brilliant. Good, so yeah. if we could take that back to planning, and no, I can, but if um, one of the portfolio holders could, that would be grateful. Yeah. One of the village schools in my, uh, in my uh, division at, at Hackness, I've just given them uh, some money towards uh, buying um, a greenhouse Apparently the kids there are really enthusiastic about gardening and um, they're going on this uh, avenue of uh, raising money towards, a, towards a, a greenhouse. I've been very happy to, to support that because um, it's got RHS approval as well. So it's, it's ticking a lot of boxes from a children's point of view. They're learning science and um, plant growing and a lot of other things as well. Councillor Smith, I'm uh, sorry, I, I know you said this is your, uh, this is your uh, ward. Any comments? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, actually, it's uh, Councillor Chat's ward. I'm in Norstead, but I was involved with the... Uh, uh, task group back in, I think it was some point between 2007 and 11 when I was last on the council, I chaired that committee and uh, that was one of the sites was Prospect Mount we identified. I'm glad that this has progressed from all this time, so it's good to read. One of the things that I did notice on this, the first point about highlighted risks, obviously th this council as a borough, we have a duty to provide an allotment, but it says in, on the here, in the absence of a town or a parish council for the Scarborough area, the Bur Borough Council has a statutory duty to provide allotments under the Small Holdings and Allotments Act of 1908. Obviously, with the changes coming along shortly when we uh, disappear <coughs> in uh, April next year, um, 
where, where do we stand then when we, what, if we get a town or a parish council? Where will we get the reassurance that, you know, who, who, who will be responsible for them? Do we have any clarification mm. on that from a That's legal a point, point of view? Guy. Can you help us, Carol? In short, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I can certainly find out for you, Councillor Smith, and um, provide you with a written response. Apologies. If you'd given me a bit of notice, I could... <laughs> right, so I take it that we're all in agreement with, uh, with, with Matthew's report and uh, wish it well. Um, I think it'd be rather nice if we could get the mayor to go along with a, a spade and, and, and a fork and um, over, well, absolutely <laughs> and uh, do, some, do some planting there to give it a civic send off um, so I take it we are all, all in favour of, of that aren't we good Thanks to absolutely you. done a good job there Matthew it's, uh, I, th I believe it was um, I don't know whether it's his ward or not Councillor um, Moore is it, is it, it isn't it? Oh, he's Ramsdale. All oh, right. And I know he did um, ask us to to pursue the uh, the idea of some uh, of some some more allotments. So it's um, it's good that it's come to to reality. Right. Well, we now move on to item six, which is the ONS work program uh, and cabinet forward plan. Um, Paul, have you anything, that, any points that you want to make at this stage? Or Carol? Thank you, Chair, members. Um, I've nothing to add at this stage other than to say the cost of living <laughs> crisis working party that uh, members from both this committee and the Places and Futures have been involved in. Um, we're aiming to get a report to the Places and Futures meeting in December and rather than duplicate matters, to invite all Lives and Homes members to that meeting when it's considered. Absolutely, yes. Yep, welcome to that. Um, and our next meeting is in January. It is in January, Chair. Um, at the moment, I don't think we have any pressing items to go on the agenda, but if anybody has any, any thoughts, um, please um, contact, uh, contact us. Yes, Chair, there is a Cabinet Forward Plan members may wish to review. And yes. obviously there may be things like better homes that may crop up in the next uh, month or so. Come up in there. Um, but we'll keep members informed uh, through the Chair and Vice Chair. Jolly good. Well, I think that uh, ends our meeting. And can I thank everybody very much indeed for contributions? Um, I don't think we're ever really going to uh, come out with a satisfactory or at least a a decision that was going to please everybody with the Whitby Cemetery thing, but um, we'll just have to wait and see how that one goes, I think. But can I thank Carol and Paul and everybody else for their support today, and uh, Levi as well behind us, keeping us straight, and wish you all, even at this early stage, a very happy Christmas. Chairman, we might be seeing each other at the, the one in December anyway, which is the cost of living. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, we can do, yes. Well, bring both, some, I'll both, bring both, some mince pies as well. Both chairmen have to bring mince pies. Yes. 